Uh, so what's the difference between indefinite and definite? Uh, definite integral has a lower limit and upper limit. Okay, so I'll go through this uh, slowly. Yeah. I'll go through this slowly. Yeah. Okay, so have a copy finish? Uh, or you just upload from your document. Okay, so the difference between uh, definite and definite, okay, if you remember the last time round, right, when we talked about uh, topic 4 part 1, the topic 4 part 1, we were doing things like this, so we were going to keep it say uh, okay, like x power n dx this gives us uh, x to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c so this is what we call an indefinite integral indefinite definite means sure I can give you a definite answer that means sure indefinite means not sure you are asking what's the value of this I'm not sure. Okay, because that you can see inside. Okay, so very quickly, uh, if you look at what's a definite integral, the actual use of integration is to find the area under the graph. So if you see, for example, from integral from A to B, right, in fact, it actually represents uh, this area here. It actually represents this area here. Okay, so in topic 4, part 2, we are looking at the a to B, the same thing as the found x. Yeah. So this is what we call, you see there's a limit here. This is what we call a definite integral because you're actually going to get a numerical value. You're actually going to get a numerical value of this. Okay? And so this is what we call a definite integral. So uh, note that uh, you see on top below, I mean on top, it's like this is what we call the upper limit. Uh, this is what we call the lower limit. Okay? So I will show you what these limits uh, they do like. Okay, so first of all, if I find the area in the graph, okay, these two are uh, definitions here. Fx, okay, is the capital M is the integral, then how do we evaluate? I mean with the two upper and lower limits. Okay, basically it's going to take B start into X, minus to take A start into X. Okay, so uh, let me show you an example. Uh. Let me show you an example. Okay. You can see. The camera can see this side. Uh, video can see this. Now you're trying to check my video. Some parts I cannot see my face. I can only see my thumb. Okay, okay, so from here, okay. So let me show you one. Okay, okay. For example, example. Example, say I'm integrating uh, x squared from the limit uh, maybe 3 to 4 uh, let's say 3 to 4 ok, 3 to 4 uh. okay, so this graph looks something like that the x square as you know the graph looks this way uh, this way uh, this way this is y equals x square ok, then from 3 to 4 3 is here 4 is here ok, it makes sense that we are finding this area uh. So far okay? So far okay? Now there are, there are situations where you know what if the curve is underneath, right? What happens if I sign both sides curve? We'll talk about that later. So for now let's assume that all the areas that you're finding, they are pleasant and positive. They are all not. Okay, so how do I evaluate this? Ash. Okay. Okay, so So the integral okay, uh, from 3 to 4, x squared dx, right? Okay, so very simple. If you see this integral, this is integrate it's x squared with respect to x. So I do the same. Uh, I integrate. So this is a uh, integrate x squared, what will I get? Chongqing. Give me a name in the class. A boy and boy. We shall uh, integrate x squared again. Okay? x to over 3 x to over 3 then from 3 to 4 ok so this is how we write it so once you have the 3 and 4 right don't need to plus c don't need to plus c I'll explain why I'll explain why so if you look at this function here ok this part is like the fx this part is like the fx this part is like the capital fx ok so how do I evaluate this ok you see the 4 here right the 3 here, 
Okay, so you just write, okay, so you can see this part is 4 power, power 3. Subtract 3 power 3. Okay, so meaning I sub 4 in to the x minus I sub 3 in to the x. Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand? Okay, so okay, you see yeah. X cube, can you see this is the 4? This one represents x equals to 4. Actually, it means x equals to 3. Lah. Because you can see here, x equals to 3. x equals to 4. Oh, okay. So, all I do, all I do. Okay. You remember last time, uh, if function x is x cube, what is f of 4? You see? 4 cube. Can you see 4 cube? 4 cube, right? 4 cube, right? Okay. So if function x is x cubed over 3, what is function of 4? Ah, okay, then uh, okay, then Nicole, what is f of 3? You know, set 3 polynomials. Uh, 3, right, this I sub 3 to take over x. Ah, okay, ma? So, so, this one in the sense, right, this is like a f of 4, f of 4, minus f of 3. Meaning, you see, uh, I sub 4 inside here, 4 cubed over 3, minus, I sub in 3 here, 3 cubed over 3. Why is it minus? Why, why is it, uh, actually this formula, why is it minus? Uh? That's a formula. <laughs> Anyone don't, don't understand how to, to apply? Anyone don't understand how to apply? Can I start to apply? Most important is you know how to apply. Can I? So you integrate. So you say I sub in 4 into the function. That's the upper limit. Minus I sub in 3 into the function. That's the lower limit. Okay? Can I? So the, the thing is in this arcade. Okay, I write. Uh, if I integrate right, okay, not for the next part, uh, I'm answering this part. Why is there no plus c? Or where did the c go? So you see, if I, if I, if I write the integral, is, there should be a plus c, right? There should be a plus c, right? Okay, so the plus c, if I sub in 4, it does not affect. So it will be something like, uh, it should be something like 4 cubed over 3 plus c. This means that I sub x equals to 4 into fx. Subtract 3 cubed over 3 plus c. I sub x equals 3 into fx. What do you notice about the c? Uh, it cancels out, it just passes away all. That's why you notice that in this sentence, where did the c go? The c is cancelled out. There's no need to write the plus c. Follow so far? Okay, okay, okay. Try to stay with me, try to stay with me. Don't do other things, uh. don't do other things. Okay, uh. Try to stay with me, don't do other things. Don't jump and jump up. Okay, uh. So you follow me, okay? Keep more, uh. Keep more. okay. So you see, uh, for example, in this here, you see, uh, if you take 2x, I get x squared plus c. Then if I sub from 1 to 2, right? You can see x squared plus c here, x squared, x is 2, x squared, x is 1. The c cancels out. Oh. That's why there's no need for C. So maybe you tell a friend, in definite integral, there is no C. Squeeze, squeeze your partner, tell your friend, write it right now, in definite integral, there is no C. There is no C. Okay, there is no C. So this part very important. Huh? This is one of the top 10 popular mistakes. Huh? People very like C, okay? In definite integral, there is no C. So let me show you question 2.1. Okay, I'm not difficult. Huh? You see, if I integrate, so all I do is I take the function, I integrate what's inside, then I substitute 2, I substitute 0. Okay? So this is, uh, let's see, you see, okay, if I sub 2, this is the value of substituting 2, I sub 0, this is just 0. Huh? Okay? Sub in upper limit minus sub in lower limit. Okay, starting upper limit, you see, okay, 2, right? 
two power four sixteen, two is here. This is I sub into. Okay, so in case you're, you're still a bit lost, huh? this part means I sub x equals to two. This part I sub x equals to zero. Okay, ma? Okay, okay. Okay, oh. Most important, if you can apply this, huh? you, you, are, you experience success with the question, that's very good. Then, then I keep my getting uh, outcome for the day. Okay? So with that, you can do question 2.1, 2.2. 2.1 and 2.2. Okay? Okay, question 2.1. Okay, question 2.1. Question 2.1. Question 2.1. Question 2.1. The answer is 6. Question 2.2. The answer is 53 over 6. So I do one part B. It's 
always the upper limit minus the lower limit. The integral from B to A fx is again the upper limit subtract the lower limit. Now you look at the difference between these two. See here, you look at the difference between these two. F B minus F A, F A minus A. Can you see they are same? Same, same, but different, right? So in a sense, this is like the negative of F A minus F B. What is B minus A? What is A minus B? Remember, J is 2 or J is 1, we like to test you this. X minus Y is negative for Y minus X. So this one, you can see that this is also the negative for uh, B to A. Fx are uh, Bx. You see how uh, these these are related. The moment the uh, moral of the story is if the limits swap, okay, from A to B, B to A, I just put on the negative sign. Is that okay? So this is to explain the second property. So far okay. Yeah. Okay. Stay here. Stay. So the next one, the third property is this. Okay, so suppose uh, I have another look here. I draw another one here. So if you want to look at the board, uh, I draw another one here. Uh, this is, see this black colored area, right? Can I say it's the integral from B to C? Fx. Yes. Can I? Okay, so if I want to ask you, how do I represent this integral then? A to B fx dx of A. So now, okay, can you see A to B and B to C? If I want to combine as one integral, I can say it's the same as I go from A to C. I can go A to C. Okay, logical to you? So this is to explain the third one. The third one. In particular, this is okay, press on it. Okay, this is very good. If if uh, A is less than B less than C. Okay, so that's the this will help you with question 2.2. This will help you with question 2.2. Okay? This will help you with question 2.2. So now you can do two points. All very common sense once you think in reverse of differentiation. Okay, oh. so when you differentiate sine, you get cosine, right? So it makes sense that when you integrate cosine, but you also get back sine, right? So when I integrate sine, I will get negative cosine. Because when I differentiate cosine, I get negative sine, right? So when I integrate sine, I get negative cosine. Differentiate tangent is secant square, integrate secant square, get back tangent. So far, okay? Very, very logical formulas, huh? very, very logical. You just think about the reverse of differentiation, right? Okay, huh? just think in reverse of differentiation. Okay, huh? yeah. So, pass example two way. If I can take 154 from here to gravity, from gravity I can take 154 come back to the square, right? Or 74. So, why? Uh, you know that when we differentiate cosecant is minus cosecant cotangent, right? So because all the formulas here goes like that, when we differentiate cosecant, it gives us minus cosecant cotangent law. So when we integrate minus cosecant cotangent, it also gives us cosecant. When we differentiate secant, we get secant tangent. So when we integrate secant tangent, we also get that. So far okay man. Can I, uh, don't worry, this one I know it's very overwhelming at the start, but give me some time, give me some time. I don't expect you to remember all today. Not today, I'm not today. Uh. Okay, so give me some time. You just today, right? You just need to know these formulas exist. That's all. Okay, you know where to find them. Okay? Differentiate tangent is minus cosecant square, minus cosecant square is tangent. So integrating all these formulas. With that, you also have the chain rule formulas. Okay? So when we differentiate sine fx, you know that when you 
Yeah, we will differentiate sine fx plus c. Chain rule will cause derivative to spill out. Am I right? There will be a chain rule that causes the derivative to spill out. So similarly, when I integrate, I need to collect back the chain rule back inside to give you sine fx plus c. What does it mean? This example, uh, example, the formula. Integrate. 2x cosine x squared, for example, dx. You can see that this is the fx. This takes the place of the fx. Uh, this takes the place of the f prime. This is supposed to give you sine of fx plus c, which is sine of x squared plus c. Okay, can I? Sine of x squared plus c. So you see, 2x cosine x squared will give you sine of x squared plus c. Comfortable so far? Comfortable so far? Can I? Okay, I'm not going to the formula. Okay, so same thing, uh, sine x squared is f prime, secant squared also is f prime. Okay? All the formulas work in reverse. It works in reverse. Cosecant fx, if I differentiate, cosecant cotangent, this is the outside function. Differentiating the inside function gives me the f prime. Differentiating the inside function gives me the f prime. Differentiating the inside function gives me the f prime. So when I integrate, I collect back the f prime, I push it back to the Okay, I shove it back to the cotangent. This is the, all the karma of differentiation. Chain rule, right, has all the f prime appearing. So when I integrate, I must also make sure that the f prime is there, so that I collect it back. Okay. So all the answers here, there's no f prime anymore. There's no f prime anymore. But does it does it connect with you? Yeah. If it's okay, then uh, let's look at question three point one. Okay. Question three point one. 